All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and implement the concept of path-based variables in Terraform. So inside of our DevOps here, we're gonna go ahead and do locals.tf, and we're gonna go ahead and say locals, and then add in a few things. First off, I'll just go ahead and do root dir, and that's gonna be equal to this string of dir name, and then abs path of path.root. Okay, so path.root is built into Terraform modules. ABS path is a function that's also built into Terraform that takes the absolute path of whatever path.root is. And then dir name will take the directory of that. So in other words, this root directory is gonna be my Terraforming Kubernetes project. And the path.root is gonna be DevOps. And then the absolute path will be my system path for DevOps. Now to see this, we can actually go into our terminal here. Let's jump into DevOps just to make our command simple. And then just type out Terraform and console. Hit enter. Now we're inside of the Terraform console. Now I also wanna keep this in as a shortcut. So I'll bring it into my make file as well and make sure I have that chdir in there too. Okay. So with this in mind, I've got locals in here now. So if I actually type out path.root in my console, right, what we'll see is period. So period doesn't tell me a whole lot. Where abs path and then path.root tells me a whole lot more information, right? And so this is how this actually ends up working. And so I can also use dir name of abs path of path.root and hit enter and there we go. Absolute path of the entire project directory. Now, the reason I want this is so that I can declare a couple more variables in here. The first one is gonna be my k8's config dir and this is gonna be based off of root dir or the root directory. Now I can use this variable with simply local dot root dir. And we can verify this by pasting it in here. And so I do see that it does that local directory. And that also means then I can do slash dot cube slash. Now the reason I'm doing dot cube has to do with where I'm gonna have my configuration for my Kubernetes file. So that also means that I wanna actually create a ks root config file as well. And so it's gonna take in, I could do the same exact thing or I could just copy this and put in cube config. So I actually have two options here and I'll do cube config.yaml. I could use this and do something like that, right? Um, or well, getting rid of the trailing slash there because that might cause some issues or I'll just keep it like that. It's completely up to you. Now, still in the console, if I do local dot, I get a value that doesn't exist and that's because our console goes off of the current state of those files. So now if I do local dot that and local dot that, I, I have those files now, which is fantastic. So this is just those variables and there's a lot of them inside of built-in Terraform. So you can check out those local variables or built-in variables like path, right? So uh, path.root, you would need to use path.root right? So an actual thing directly instead of just the general one. There's other functions in Terraform as well that you could definitely research in the documentation. Uh, but these are the ones that I use frequently. Now notice that it's local instead of var, right? So back into our main.tf, we used var. Var dot is input variables. Locals, we can declare whatever we want on these local variables as well. Now, typically speaking, I use local variables for like file paths and things that are related to the system where my other variables I use variables for, right? Uh, so just slightly different, but basically ones that I intend to change frequently are gonna be the ones that are this, the ones that don't change or probably won't change based off of the system are gonna be under locals. Uh, so feel free to experiment with that as much as you'd like. Uh, but now that we've got this, let's go ahead and actually use locals to create a file on my local machine to sort of emulate what we'll end up doing when we actually create our Kubernetes cluster. 
So we now want to output some data to this file right here, or more specifically this one, right? And to do this, we're gonna be using another kind of resource called local file. And hopefully what this will do is show you how Terraform works, even just with one single file. And the ultimate goal, of course, would be actually having our Kubernetes configuration going in there as well from a real cluster. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and experiment with Terraform a little bit. Now, I will mention that string substitution is very common in Terraform, and this is how you do it. You just use dollar sign, curly brackets, and then the value that you need to substitute. And then of course, inside of a string itself, Terraform does it very intelligently and just replaces it for you. You don't need to do that as hopefully you already realize at this point. So now what we're gonna do is jump into DevOps and create cluster.tf. Now I'm gonna define it in cluster.tf because again, Terraform combines all these TF files into essentially one. But typically speaking, I would put it in main.tf underneath here. That's both my Kubernetes cluster as well as this file that we're gonna create. Now, the only reason I'm not doing that is to keep things very concise to what they need to do for this course. So the first thing that I wanna do is declare a resource. So resource meaning that it could be a file, it could be a virtual machine, it could be a Kubernetes cluster or it could be pretty much anything that our providers give to us. So this resource, if we go back into Terraform, the registry itself, we can see that all of the providers have all kinds of resources in here. And we're definitely gonna be using one of those resources very soon. So the first thing is we're gonna declare local file. Now this is a resource that Terraform has built into it. It isn't something that we need from a third party at all. And we're gonna go ahead and call this local file k8s config as in Kubernetes config. And that's it, right? So I'll show you how to access this resource in a moment, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and say content and we're gonna set it equal to actual data coming soon. And the file name, I personally think this should be called file path, but it's called file name, is going to be our local variable of k8s config file. And so back into our cluster, we'll use that string substitution again with local dot k8s config file. So I don't need to hard code it at all. And then the next thing is we'll go ahead and add in a file permission. This is optional, but it's gonna be something we'll need for our uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster or kube CTL eventually, which this allows it to be readable and writable by the owner of this, or the, the user that we're logged into it, that is. So now that we've got this, we can actually create this file. Now how we do this is inside of our DevOps folder where all the Terraform files are, or we can use you know, the chdir command. We can run Terraform and plan. So what we're gonna see here is this inconsistent dependency lock. So it's actually asking me to upgrade my uh, Terraform because of using this local file. So let's go ahead and upgrade it with still with that same backend. So terraform init dash upgrade. And with that backend file, oops, we didn't need to do all of that. So we'll go ahead and get rid of the double init. And now it will have everything that I needed, which included local, right? And so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and do terraform plan again. And we should see that it's gonna show us essentially what's gonna happen is add one thing, change nothing, and destroy nothing. All right, so it's changing and adding all of these things right here. So we can actually apply it with simply Terraform apply and hit enter, and then type out yes, and it will actually create that file for us in the folder we actually specified. And if I make changes and just say something like a data coming soon, save it in the Terraform file, run plan again, it's gonna show me that it's replacing it. So it's gonna remove everything and then replace it with this new data. And then I can just do apply and say yes. And there it goes, it actually changes all of that data. Now it actually deletes the original and then replaces it with a new one. That's just how Terraform handles local files. It's not gonna update it with the new content because all it really knows is that the data is different. It doesn't really care about what's in there so much as that it just knows that it's different. So it's gonna go ahead and replace it. Uh, but that's how we do these local files and that's how Terraform works essentially with all of these other resources. So we're actually right at the point where we can 
um, create a cluster. But before we do, I'm going to go ahead and do terraform destroy. And all this is going to do is remove that file. It doesn't remove the folder itself, but it will remove the file. And if I want to bring it back, I just do apply and I can do that as many times as I like. It's really, really cool. So let's go ahead and actually create our terraform cluster now.